Hello, this is Coach Mayan Bauer with an AP Precalculus video going over how to use Desmos for our regressions. Um, <clears throat> I just used an example here from one of our sections in our notes. I think it's 2.6, example two. Um, and I rewrote it a little bit. Um, and I'll put the PDF of this available to you on the um, description of this video so you have it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to practice going through Desmos and all that fun stuff. So let's let's get through this. So let's read, read the question together here. So the weight of the newborn baby is going to be modeled by a linear function for the first four months after birth. Selected values of WT and kilograms of a particular newborn baby are given the table of well, to the right in this case, where T represents the number of months since birth. So it says to use Desmos to write a linear quadratic and exponential regression. So that's all we're going to do here is use this table um, and kind of go over... Um, the regressions. So what you're going to do here is make sure that you go to desmos.com slash practice because this is the one that they're going to provide for you on the AP exam is the practice one. Um, so I have it right here. So if I just press enter, it's going to spit this up for in you can choose an assessment that you can see here. Now, unfortunately for College Board, they do not have the AP one yet out for pre-calculus, but I'm assuming it's going to be whatever this one is for um, pre-AP. So this is not for AP pre-calculus, but my guess is that's the one. You can kind of see all the other assessments right here. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and choose this one. It only offers the graphing calculator. It's going to start practice. Okay, so to enter a table here, hit the plus button. And it gives you a lot less options on this practice version. So we're going to have to enter that table. Um, and then we're going to enter in all these values right over there. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump back and forth because I don't have all of these values uh, in front of me or memorized. 3.2. I think this is correct. So I'm just going to go double check it. Yep, it's correct. Okay, so... And the other version of Desmos, you can actually go to the um, column over here to make a regression, but this one you can't. Um, if you do notice, it will just graph these points on there for you. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create each of these regressions manually by hitting Y and then subscript. That's when you hit the shift button next to the zero. Um, one, hit over, and I'm going to do this again, shift next to the one on this side. This is a little tilde looking type of thing, which just means approximation. Um, and then for a linear function, I'm going to do AX1 plus B. So that will give me a regression. You can see how it's being plotted. It looks pretty accurate to me. Um, I'm going to do that for each of these. So Y sub 1 for the quadratic. It's going to look like this. And she do the squared plus BX for every single x is going to have that subscript there. So you can see the um, see the black or sorry, the black one's linear, the um, red one is going to be quadratic and the last one is going to be exponential. Exponential you got to be careful. This is a different one. So a is the constant b to the x subscript 1. Okay, now the exponential one is going to spit out an incorrect one. It's weird. Um, so there's different ways to do these regressions. TI does it a certain way, and that's what the AP exam uses, the TI. Um, so for this one, we need to be in log mode. And this one, by default, is in log mode, which is really nice. So um, we need to be in log mode. If you go to the non-practice one, then you'll have to type in what log mode is. So the practice one defaults log mode, which is exactly what we want. The non-practice one, if you're going to go just regular Desmos calculator, you would actually get a different answer for this one because um, it doesn't default to log mode. You can always um, add in the log mode into the um, calculator version of this, not the practice version. But anyway, super convenient to have this already going to log mode for us. Um, so now, since I have these, I'm also going to graph the um, residual plots. That way I can see which one of these is best. Um, that, and that's the way in AP Pre-Calculus that we use to evaluate. Okay, so um, coming back here, read question A here. Looking at each group, 
regression model plots, which model is most appropriate. It's going to be really tough on this one, just to let you know, because we got five points, because we're looking for where there's no pattern. Um, but what you can do here is if I click this residuals, I can plot all the residuals. So for um, E1 corresponds to this first one right here, just because it's the order I did it in. E2 is going to correspond to the, uh, the red one. And then E3 is going to respond to the uh, blue one. I'm actually going to match these up. I can go up here to these colors and change these. So I'm going to have these. Oh. There we go. If I hit that edit button up the up, upper right hand corner, I'm going to plot these to match. Um, sometimes it's hard to scroll. Sometimes you just click on the table and just oh, going over. Oh no. Well, this is having me a hard, give me a hard time to scroll. Tell you what, uh, easier for me to do this. I'll change this to um, purple. And I'll change this one to purple so that matches. There we go. So purple, um, red, and black. So I can come down here and see these residuals. I can just zoom in. And I'm trying to see which one of these does not have a pattern. It's kind of hard to tell for this one just because we don't have enough plots. When you do your assessments, you'll have enough plots, and you'll be able to, to evaluate this. By the way, I don't, I'm not a fan of the minor grid lines. I'm not going to do those. Okay, so if I just look at the first one, the linear one, um, that looks like it's a pattern because it's going like up and down. The quadratic one, that's kind of hard to tell if there's a pattern or not. It looks... Kind of looks brag to me. Exponential one here also looks like it's going from, uh, um, looks like it's almost looks like a quadratic. So I would say it's the pattern. So I would say out of all of these, the red one is not a pattern. And the red one, if I'm looking down here to the left, corresponds to the quadratic. Okay. So I'm going to say this is the quadratic because oh, there is no pattern. Okay. So use the linear model to predict the weight of this baby at 2.5 months. So come back over here. So I'm going to use the linear model. So by the way, I'm going to zoom back out. And everything here is still graphed. So linear model is going to be the um, purple one. So I'm going to unclick these two because I don't care about those. And I want to know what's going on at 2.5. So I'm going to do x equals 2.5 and see where these intersect at. Okay, so it intersects at 2.5 comma uh, 5.34. So this is going to be the weight is going to be uh, 5.34 yeah, 34 kilograms. Okay. And then finally residual for this weight at um, T equals 2. So by the way, you can do this for each one at 2.5. Like if I unclick, I'll keep the red right there. If I unclick the purple here, I can also find the same thing for the quadratic and get what that value is predicted. You can see the predicted value is a little bit different. Exponential, same thing. It's going to be a little bit different. Okay. Um, the residuals is really nice is because these are the residuals. Like E sub 1 is all the residuals um, <clears throat> at the linear one for E sub 1. All the residuals for the quadratic are E sub 2, and same thing for E sub 3, but so you know, just click on it and go over to see it for E sub 3. Okay, so the question is specifically asking for residual for the weight at T equals 2 months. Um, this isn't very specific. Um, let's go ahead and add in. Let's do the weight for the linear, because that's the um, one I just asked for before. So that one for the linear at 2 is 0.16. All you're literally doing is just reading. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for the quadratic. Oh, wait. I think that, no, yeah. The quadratic's the red one. That is 0 0.017. And then let's do the same thing for the exponential. All I'm doing now is I'm looking at e sub 3 over here. 2 is going to go 
right here. E sub 3 is this one, so 3 point or point three oh one. Okay, and that gives us the um, residuals for that for C, and there you go. That's how you do regressions using Desmos. Again, use Desmos practice. It, this will be the one that you'll be um, seeing more often. Okay. Oh, yeah, do not forget to like and subscribe.